So I got my um, Athrogenesis MP15AC in today and mainly just wanted to tear it down and uh, check dimensions to see how I'm going to go about this. So I've got a plan, but before I went any further I just wanted to record a little bit. So in order to put what I want in it, of course it'll have a sound decoder, It'll have the um, cube speakers, the larger of the two soundtracks, cube speakers. It's part 810154. We put two of those in the nose, firing down. And in the center, just behind where the speakers will be, will be the regular current keeper. I, take, I took one out of an, uh, another locomotive so I could double check the uh, dimensions. And that brings us back to about in this area and then between here and here. Uh, they make two different sizes of the wired one. I think the larger one um, is going to fit. It'd be a little tight, but there's, there's more room in here than I thought there was. So obviously I move, remove the board. Um, that, that's just taking up a lot of room, so I just I just remove it. Took the lights out. Uh, took the cab off. There's a little piece here and two back here that you can get from on the inside of the uh, shell there, and just press with a screwdriver gently, and it'll come off. Um, once again, make sure you've got your handrails out. There's two in the back and the two on the sides. Make sure those are pulled out. And then once you're once you're prying, make sure they didn't wiggle their way. Believe it or not, they got a they got a way of finding their way back home. And then that just slid right out. To be honest, I just pulled the light bulb wires from the rear before I even took the cab off, and they came right, everything just came right out. Uh, I did kind of go in there and clean a little bit because it had double sided tape on the top and also on the nose of the shell. I want to get that, that all nice and cleaned up so there's no sticky residue. And then I painted the back portion with uh, flat black. I'll probably put another layer or two on just to make sure that the LEDs don't bleed through. Okay, so this, this is where I am. The only other thing, well I did do something on this. It's probably a little hard to see. It's right in the center there's two little embosses that stick down. To be honest, I don't know what those are. But I just took a drill bit and kind of stuck it in the center there because it, it does have a center and turned it until it was pretty much flush and then I just used one of your kind of flat and exacto knife um, to smooth that out. And then the next next step I did is there's four of these little uh, metal weight emboss because it did have this in the front that's that's not on the sound unit so it's not going to be on this one so that was removed the two screws that go in there basically these were embosses sticking straight up and you just I grabbed on as hard as I could and just kind of bend it one way or the other and it worked really good except for this one I'm going to have to sand a bit and before I do that sand and uh, file before I do that I'm gonna mask off all the moving components so nothing gets down in there so that's pretty much where I am at now I've not done anything else I just wanted to document it like I said there's there's a bit more room in here than I thought the motor is kinda it's small obviously wanted to test it so you know I tested on a DC track and it moved very nice and smooth um, but once those little um, pieces are taken off uh, it gives you quite a bit of room um, to be honest even before I took those off I put the shell down on on top with the current keeper and it slid right up to the, the nose with no problem. I mean, there's there's a decent amount of room. So this Q 
cubes will be glued on the up underside and the sound will come out through the screens on the side so the two cubes will be firing downward then I'll glue the current keeper in there and then what I want to do here is the decoder I'll probably tack down with just a little bit of CA and then um, just connect the wires and just kind of double check that uh, nothing's rubbing um, I need to I'm gonna go ahead and put LED lights in this like I do everything else and I've got enough functions that if I want to do a cab light or truck light or step lights whatever I can add that um, so that's that's pretty much it it's kind of nice to have this I mean it pops out real easy and you can see what you're doing uh, so I think I'll wire it with the shell next to it like I normally do just so I know I've got enough wire to take the shell off but it is handy some of these units um, have like a dynamic exhaust or not it's just a replace of uh, optional piece depending on the model you got you can snap that off because I was having trouble getting the shell back on and one of the resistors kept getting pinched so I was able to pop that off so this this kind of same deal so when I go to put it back together I can kind of use some tweezers or my finger or whatever to guide the wires where I want them and then just go ahead and put that cap right back on so I don't think this is going to be quite as uh, I thought it was going to be a nightmare because I didn't want to put just a single capacitor I wanted to put the the current keeper on here and I just assumed there wouldn't be enough room but I, I think well I've already done all the measurements and everything fits with room to spare it doesn't come any further back than here so that means I don't have to go into the cab for anything um, some people will just take a single capacitor and slip it inside this little uh, part of the cab and then it's not seen but I don't know why when I tried a capacitor it just didn't seem like it was enough if I want to have this thing crawling on one of my other models it, it would stop with just uh, I had two capacitors in uh, parallel and uh, it wasn't enough so I always try to put a current keeper in it looks like it won't be a problem so that's good so I went ahead and filed down those nubs that <clears throat> I was showing before and painted over them. So there should be nothing in the way. That's all I really did on the frame. Um, I just temporarily wired it together and was running it back and forth a bit. It runs very smooth. Um, it's probably going to be hard to see, but pulled the lights out and put the um, LEDs down inside and I'm using those 402 type LEDs you can kind of see it yeah there because I'm gonna do a cab light so that one in the middle is an example of how big it is it's the 0402 and then on this I did the same thing I got two back in there I still need to uh, hit it with a little bit of Elmer's let that set and then I'll uh, paint it um, with a couple coats of black just like I did in here and then I mean that's why it's pretty hard to see and then I got from um, uh, Detail West I think is the name of the company I had some of these lens lenses and they they work perfect um, for something like that you can see it on the front the front sorry completely done so there's no light bleed or anything after I put the, the black on there and then I just ran the wires and just tack them every once in a while uh, with some CA down the edges there and I'll do the same when I do the um, step lights and the um, truck lights in the rear 
So I'll have that, and then like I said, the cab light. So that's that's pretty much it so far. Um, I was waiting on some wire to come in, and um, it's just taking forever. So I looked at what I had, and I like to use the Circuitron. Um, I think they call it ultra fine hookup wire. Um, Walters is one of the only places I see that sells it. But it's just taking a while to get here. So that's probably as far as I'm going to, well, as far as I can go, actually. Uh, I'm waiting on the decoder and the speakers and the current keeper. Um, so the two cubes will go in here, the current keeper, and then the decoder. And that's why I wanted to have... This would be the, the back section, and I don't want to go beyond here. So I've already did the measurements, and I think I can tack the decoder right on the top lip here on both sides, and it sits above the flywheel. And then I'll just run all the wires up and over. Um, I might put a, a small piece of styrene or something here just, just to make sure this doesn't, doesn't rub. And there should be plenty of room. Like I said, I was I was surprised how much room is in this is uh, this one. Now I don't know about the um, Atlas uh, MP15 DC. I don't know how much room that one has. I mean, I I had one or two, but we're talking over ten years ago. So, but this really does have a lot of room. Um, I mean, you could. If you really, I'm not sure why you wouldn't want to just, on this model, go with the current keeper. Um, you could, like I had said previously, put one capacitor in here, and um, I'd probably paint it black, but stick it right on this base here, stick it up, and parallel them to get um, instead of just having having the one there's two areas where you got a decent amount of room but those two speakers will sit right over this area and I think it'll sound good it's going to come down through the truck and then <clears throat> these models have you can see the light through it have real mesh so I think that's going to sound really good I did a GP15T, and it kind of had the same thing going on, where it had the had the mesh. And I am the speakers down. It, the original speaker was firing up, and I'm not sure why, because there's nowhere for the sound to go. So I removed that oval speaker and put in three cubes aiming down, and it sounded really good. So that's about as far as I can go. Um, I'm gonna go and. Like I said, touch that up with the little Elmers and let it sit, and then I'll I'll hit the whole roof with flat black, and then uh, test it for any kind of light leaks or anything. So that light in the cab, um, I'll have to play around with it because I'm gonna have the step lights and the truck lights. I want to program under brightness one and two. If they had a three, then it'd be simple. I'd just put the cab light on it and then I could adjust it on the fly, but it doesn't. So I think, I think I'm just gonna have to up the resistance to get the, the light brightness I want. But the option's there to flip it around any, any which way I want. Okay, so I got the stuff in today and I started working on it. I've already test fit these um, down into the nose like I was talking about. And there's plenty of room. Um, 
above this gear box here. So I just I'm gluing those together now. Um, I did put because I like to do the um, step lights, and I I found I found when I put the body on that that metal comes like right up to the top step, which looks it's upside down, so it looks like the bottom one now. So that's why I, I melt a little channel here. So it'd have room for the wires and the LED on both sides. And I dremeled two little slots. There's two uh, slots along the body there for the truck lights. That will be truck light here and over here. And then I usually just do all the LEDs in series. I made a little um, slot there going in. Um, I usually, I kind of like to come back and do those last, but I want to make sure the, the slots were there because once I get into this, it, it just makes a huge mess. Uh, I took the cab off again, uh, because I knew it was going to blow all kinds of fine plastic dust in there and the Atherns use that tacky glue to put their windows in place and when that uh, dust gets in there, it's a nightmare to get off. It just it gets all gunked up in there. I got the speakers down in there. <clears throat> I got a little gap on each side so I can run the wires for the step lights. And, all. and then the current keeper's in there. And then I'm going to mount the decoder a little hard to manipulate because everything's so tight but it has this much room so I found a nice happy place for it on the um, I scribed a little line there and that's where it's gonna mount it's got room between it and the decoder um, all the wires will be pulled up over the top of the decoder. Um, all the wires from the lights to the truck wires, I actually pulled them out through the bottom so I could test fit everything. And I've got plenty of room. So next thing I was going to do is just go ahead and tack the decoder in place, test fit it, and then go ahead and... Um, just do a quick test sound and all that um, I'll check I do have to uh, solder the motor wires on because those are right under where the decoder are going to be so I'll, that's the only two wires I'm really gonna um, attach for now just just to test it out make sure it's running the right uh, direction and forward and uh, also check the speakers so there's the uh, decoder. I've got it already soldered on the two motor wires. And then put a little CA on there to put the uh, decoder on. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and start attaching the uh, truck wires. I was going to put a little uh, piece of styrene over this. So when these wires are coming up and over, there's no way that they can rub on anything and I want to wire everything with the top off it like this and then when I assemble it I'll pull all the wires up through the the opening in the top that way I can still service it like any other locomotive but the wires are going to take up a lot of space so um, like I said, I'll wire it all with it open just the way it is for wire length purposes. And then after that, I can start pulling them up and through that opening when I put the shell on. All right, well, I got everything back together. I think the last time I showed, I hooked up the trucks and 
Then I moved on to just the front rear light. I do have a cab light wired, but it's not, I don't know what resistor I want to put in there yet, so. Um, and then the extra wires I basically just shoved down into, once I was able to put it together, like I was saying, this, this little guy here pops right off, and I was able to feed the wires. It was, it was kind of a helper. I could use tweezers to kind of help guide the wires where I wanted them when I put everything back together so it's not rubbing. Um, so I've got some function wires left that I'm going to do the um, step lights, truck lights, and then I'll go ahead and finish it off by finding a resistor that's um, the right value for that for that cab light but so th this is just a test right now um, I got it turned down by half so let me put it back the way it comes from the factory because um, I've got it down set to 64 So I think the two um, cubes in the front, they're the larger of the two cubes that Soundtrack sells, and that's what's in there. And then you saw those in the nose aiming down, and these grates here. see the yeah you see the light through there so that was my my thinking is that aiming two of those down would be plenty um, it helps that those grates are there but it's still gonna come down um, the sound would come down where the front truck is and I normally do three but two sounded really good and they have to be series you can't parallel them because then you'll take your ohm 
uh, load from eight down to four, and that's not safe. Good chance you'd burn up your decoder. So I seriesed them. Um, every other locomotive I've got three on, except for my steam, I've got four. I just had the extra room, so. Anyway, this is still just a test. Um, it looks finished, but I still need to, I'll probably have to go ahead and separate the shell from the, um, the body, the, the frame. Uh, probably won't be able to see it. Well, you can kind of see light if you look. Yes, the current keeper working. Okay, you can see my beige wall through what I'm talking about. If you look just above the top step, I had milled a slot in there uh, because the metal comes right up to. It looks like a small hole, but the reason it looks like that is because you got a screw going up through there and some plastic that it engages with. If I get a little closer, there you go. See that rectangular opening? Um, I just wanted to mill that clean, so when I put the LED up in there facing down, because when it's apart, I attach them to the shell, and um, I've already marked it. You can't see it, but I went in with a X-Acto knife with it together, and um, went ahead and kind of scored the outer edges. Uh, on this one, I'm not sure. It's really hard to see, but that second step, and I can't even point to it, but anyway, same thing at the very top there under that top step there you can kind of see it there's a I've got a Dremel with a little ball bit on the end and I just made a small channel there because uh, not very far back is um, you can see that f flat black there that's the metal uh, so on the front, I did have a little bit of depth to work with, so I went ahead and dremeled both sides, and that, with the shell off, will be easy to see. And then, I think I already mentioned it, but, and I don't, I don't know that you can see it with it together. Uh, probably not. Anyway, there'll be a little LED on both sides uh, by the truck. And then I'll find a proper resistor for the cab. You can set these up to have the two different brightness outputs. But I've got three here. And I think I kind of want to just, I don't know, probably use the, the brightness registers for the step lights and the um, truck lights the way I have on all the others just for consistency sake I, I haven't put a cab light in any other locomotive so um, I'll just play around with the resistors and uh, dim the lights way down um, that way I can get a realistic look because I mean, if I'm running this and I'm trying to show somebody on a layout, they're going to have to kind of get down underneath like that and look up to see the light. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be very bright at all. And, um, but at night, if I dim the lights and I'm kind of doing a dusk or night, uh, session, then yeah, they, you should see them just fine, but they should look uh, real and not, you know, blasting. Um, so anyway, that's, I could stop here if I wanted, but I, I still, there's some stuff I need to add. And, uh, I'll go ahead and add that when it's done.
show you what it looks like when it's finished. So I got the truck lights in, painted around the edges and all. The wires are run with the resistor on it. Now I'm starting the uh, step lights, which is the last step. It's kind of hard to see, but. <coughs> Yeah, there's one right there. And that's probably the most fun. Uh, got a little happy with the Dremel tool and it hit the edge there a little bit. But I'll paint that. So those wires, I usually just run them straight through. I got lucky on this one. It stayed put right away. So I'm not touching it. I'm going to let it set up and dry completely and then I'll build up the sides with a little bit of CA um, when you add CA you got to be real careful because it softens the previous CA that you put down and there's not much on there now so I'll just like fill it one side of that LED let it set again and fill it the other side and I think I showed before I've got a little a little notch cut in there so when the frame goes on it doesn't pinch anything so that'll be my starting point um, it'll be there's all my positives wound together right there so it'll one leg will go all the way down inside run along the edge and come up to there and then I just daisy chain I'll run that down over and up put a light in here and I typically try to do it um, without having to connect a bunch of separate wires which is a little tricky because I'll kind of test fit the wire if that makes sense kind of run it through its uh, entire path and then I'll pull it back out so I'll snip it cut it um, pull it back out and then go ahead and solder the LED on and I got to make sure I got the right orientation of the LED when I solder it and then I'll it just goes all the way around positive and then out is negative to positive to negative and then it'll come back here and hit these two back here and then it'll finish up coming out or actually be wired up here and that'll be it so we got it all put back together again but this time with all the lights and uh, functions hooked up on it so I've got of course on zero you got your front headlights rear headlight or rear lights um, I've got the truck lights and they do a good job at night you can see the um, it has a bit of a flicker look on the camera and again it also has a bit of a bluish look but it's it's not bluish it really is in real life it's white um, so I got the truck lights under each side and then I got let's see step lights the back one I actually had to mill a slot so they would fit because right around that back light where it almost looks like a squared off U or channel that's actually the metal there was uh, no room so I had to had to make make a little slot there make some room and then I've got both of those set on brightness one because I noticed on my other locomotives they're set at about the same you can go from 
well zero would be off and that well, you know what would be the point but uh, one being the lowest brightness all the way up to 255 and 255 is just blinding it's like a headlight basically so I put all that on brightness one and then they also have a brightness two and that's what I did the cab and at night it looks really good if I get the right angle yeah you can see see the light up inside there and um, I was playing around with it before but what's really nice about these Tsunami 2 decoders is they've got that that ability to set up um, your lights under a bright there's two different brightness um, registers that you can uh, program into the light just like a function so if if a head if uh, one of these in this case one of these lights are too bright or I think even a, I'm not tried it on a flashing one but I don't see why it wouldn't work if you thought it was too bright you could go in there and um, well in this case there's no effect so the CV that you would adjust for the effect you just go down and look for brightness one and I believe that's uh, I believe it's 20 a value of 20 and you'd put that in there under the effect and then you can skip on over to I believe it's CV61 controls the brightness and then when you go in there and make that change especially if you're doing it um, on the main like I normally do as soon as you hit the enter you'll you'll see the um, the light change and that's that's really nice because with the cab I was going to do a resistor and then I was thinking if I don't get it just right it's going to bug me so putting it together like I said before I had all the wires uh, pretty much as short as I could get them I, I kind of hate to work that way but this thing's small so when I was done I carefully fed all the wires up inside and then this piece pops off and I just kind of used tweezers to move everything where I wanted. It really didn't take much work at all. Just wanted to make sure I wasn't pinching any wires when I put the shell on. And then most of the spaghetti is right under here. And I just made sure nothing was like sticking up or stacked up. Because there's, there's a lot of resist. There's uh, I think six resistors all together. Or five, I'm sorry, because there's one function I didn't use. But anyway, so let's start it.
Now I've also set up the digital dynamic exhaust. So if it's going uphill or downhill, it will adjust automatically and accordingly. So you'll hear it notch up and get louder if, uh, if there's resistance. So I'll put my finger behind it so you can see how that works. So I really like the, um, I like that effect. That's really neat. Um, so if you're pulling, pulling a load or like I said, going uphill or downhill, it automatically adjusts the sound. And I always go in and enable the brake, um, independent and automatic. This one doesn't have the dynamic brake, but I usually set that up put a value in that as well and then if you match the train brake or automatic brake whatever you want to call it along with your rolling stock that has the sound car decoder in it you match the braking rate and that way when the train comes to a stop the um, the car or cars will uh, stop at the exact same time as the train um, as far as the the squealing of the brakes and everything, everything works in concert, and that's really cool. So anyway, um, that's probably the last one I'm going to be doing for a while. Uh, it was a challenge, but not as much as I thought. It, like I said, it's got it's got a lot more room in there than I thought. Um, the sound is loud it's loud enough for me in fact i normally have it when i tuned it i have it half of what it is right now it's at 128 and the way i set my equalizer is a little heavy on the bass side to make it sound more realistic and so i run typically around 64 on the volume and that way it doesn't because uh, there was a time or two like when i had my finger behind it the the speaker was really kind of pushing it was um and that's because i set it up the equalizer for a lower volume but over overall really pleased with the way it turned out um it takes a lot of really it takes some a steady hand and some serious patience to get to wire some of the the extras on them but it's worth it in the end i really like the way they turn out so hope you enjoyed it and uh, until next time take care <laughs>